All right, hey everybody, we're back with another news feed segment here for you. We're going to dive into all this kind of stuff. Don't forget any of these articles you want to see. All you got to do is type in the author. This is from The Guardian, and then you type in any of these keywords, and it will pull up automatically for you so that you can find these articles. And remember, I post videos every single day, sometimes twice a day. So uh, definitely check back often or hit the subscribe button. First one, now this whole thing we're talking about here. It's Farley. I'm so tired of Farley. I'm so tired of Ford. It's like, just do your job. Okay, that's what you want to just grab him by the shoulders and scream in his face. Just do your job. Okay, here he says right here, the country needs to, uh, Chief Ford, Chief Engineer says America needs to fall back in love with small cars. Okay, why, why do we got to small fall back in love with small cars? Well, who are you to tell us what we need to do? Okay, and he uses the word need constantly in here. It drives me nuts. We have to get back in love with smaller vehicles. It's super important for a society and for EV adoption. Okay, we, a lot of us don't care about EV adoption and we don't, we can't function with small cars. Okay, we don't get to do that. Uh, we are just in love with these monster vehicles and I love them too, but it, the major issue is weight. The average weight of a new vehicle sold in the U.S. last year was 4,329 pounds, an increase of 1,000 pounds from 1980. 1980 was 44 years ago, okay? I mean, come on, seriously here. This is ridiculous. Ford expects to introduce a 30 grand all electric that will be profitable in roughly two and a half years. Ford's EVs are profitable now. I don't care what he tells you. Remember, these companies don't even pay tax anymore. They, when they say not profitable, it's because they cut all that stuff out of there. Um, if you remember back in the day, because I'm, I'm not an accountant and I don't play one on TV, but I remember, you know, when we used to like hear about how like Pepsi, uh, Pepsi and Coke company corporations they uh they didn't make one they didn't pay one penny in taxes okay uh and then these other companies uh they don't make one penny in profit okay that's smart if you can run a business and not make any profit then that's a good thing because that means that your taxes can be covered by that and you can get rid of it there's a remember when you used to get the coke bottle and flip it over and it would say one free coke you know and you got that that's a complete write-off of the total amount of that bottle of coke for them there's all these things so when they tell you they're not profitable i don't buy it for one second not even a little bit i'm not playing these games um and you're not going to convince me otherwise um but these him and his his bs on this stuff you have to make a radical change as an automaker to get to a profitable ev they're doing it everywhere else and nobody's complaining about it the only people complaining about it for it is you okay honda's doing it kia's doing it nissan's doing it nissan just offered the leaf you can get a leaf for like 20 bucks a month or something it's ridiculous they're they're all doing just fine with them except for you ford you're the one complaining um and, and you're just feeding this stuff down our throat you should be a politician is what you should be that's what you should be look at here okay for ford ceo extends a stern warning for American car buyers, the American affordable EV is coming, but do not, don't expect it to be the kind of American car you're used to. Do your job. Make the car good, make it quality that we're used to, and make it affordable. Then again, on that note too, Ford quality, what we've been used to for the last four years is a lot of recalls. Okay, and a lot of quality control issues and a lot of problems. So maybe if as you're saying it's going to be worse than that, and you know, maybe you ought to find another job. I'm sorry, but to go on and just keep telling us and keep pushing this uh, as Ford moves towards electric future, we don't care about the electric future. Most of us don't. And if the electric future for you is not profitable and not working, get out of it. Go back to put in motors in the cars that we want and quit telling us that we need little baby cars because uh, you need to sell more baby cars. Okay, and then actually one guy, this this person here, this channel, this car pro, he wrote a letter to Farley. I thought it was pretty interesting. It's pretty, you know, here it is, dear Mr. And I love this because he's got the same attitude. He's getting pissed at this. Uh, dear Mr. Farley. We've met, but let me reintroduce myself. I'm a National Syndicate Automotive Talk Show host. More importantly, I'm a formerly Ford dealer and was the first two-term chairman of the esteemed Ford National Dealers Council. I was also the largest volume Ford dealer in Texas for 10 straight years and number one sales for Ford pickups in America for over a decade. I also said that if they were to cut myself, I would bleed blue. Okay. This guy's been a four, he's, this is a four dude here, 100%. And somebody who's in and know, obviously owns dealer, the whole deal. Okay. Um, 
And uh, I've also been an automotive journalist for 24 years and followed your career at Toyota and later at Ford. The re this is the reason I was dismayed and disappointed in recent comments that you made. We have a saying in Texas, dance with the one who brung you. <clears throat> and while this not gram grammatically correct, the sentence or the sediment is, you don't walk away from what made you successful. Behind a blue oval is 47 years of the best-selling truck maker in America. I understand that you are not walking away from trucks, but the focus at Ford and General Motors, by the way, seems to be on nothing but electrical, electric vehicles. With all due respect, you cannot force a market that is not there. It's been tr uh, tried many times, and in, uh, most recently on your watch. Reports from the first quarter of 2024 that seem to be backing up by financial disclosure say that Ford lost in excess of 100000 for every electric vehicle manufactured. I'm, and, then he's, <laughs> and then right here, I'm not as smart as you, but it seems to me building fewer not more of them is a better business decision. I mean, like I said, it's it's all politics. It's all BS. You cannot believe anything that comes out of Harley's mouth with this stuff. Um, they're they're peeing down your back and telling you it's raining. Um, I'm quite sure you cannot force love just because you say the words and you wish it to be true. The EV that have been the the EVs that have been sold so far have benefited from a. Push by the U.S. government, billions of dollars in government funding, rebates, big tariffs put on Chinese products to level the playing field. Generally speaking, with a business relying on government money, it's rarely successful, and history shows us that over and over again. Americans will push back if you try to force them to do anything, but if you try to come between the people and their love affair with cars, you'll become their adversary. Don't think that I don't think any car company wants that or any seller of goods for that matter. I agree that there is less than 10% factor of the people who want an electric car and their lifestyle suits at. Only 10%. I would agree with that. To most of us, I could never survive in an EV. There's nothing an EV could ever do for me in any kind of way. Um, now, an EV for like my daughter who runs back and forth to work, or even my wife who runs to you know into town to get groceries and go do things a little bit, fine. An EV would be okay for that. But for people that use their vehicle a lot and use it certain ways, an EV is the dumbest thing there is. Um, some people want electric for environmental purposes, and that's commendable. The electric car lovers should be catered to and pleased, but not at the expense of those who want a gas or hybrid vehicle. For as long as history has been recording, the majority rules, and the rule, they rule in business too. I was a dealer councilman when uh, Jack Nasser held your position. He was dead set on diversifying Ford. He went as far to say that vehicles would be a small part of... Um, of Ford. He began investing millions of dollars in tech companies, body shop, rec wrecking yards, even Ford dealerships in competition with Ford dealers. Um, I pleaded with Ford execs at the time, including NASA, to stick with what made them successful, building quality vehicles that people want to buy. The keyword, uh, keywords are the last three, okay, that people want to buy. Um, that emphasis has not changed, and I don't want to see the history repeat itself. Um, Okay, so he goes on and on and just talks about it in here, but uh, it boils down to, like you said, dance with the one that brung you. Then that's basically it. And for, they're just going on and on. Confessions from a petrol head. I love electric vehicles. It has nothing to do with politics. This whole article is about him telling you why you're, you don't need gas and you got to go to electric. He's trying to sell you stuff is what he's trying to do. Just do your job and make the vehicles that people are buying. Quit telling us what we need to buy, what we need to drive, what we have to accept, that we got to get used to crap vehicles if we want to pay less money for them. The rest of the world, Farley, they're doing it all the right way, and you just keep shoving this stuff down our throat and going. And he, you know, big regrets over quality issues. for you. You, you since you've been in office here, as the CEO of Farley or of Ford, Ford recalls have been number one nonstop. They he has the quality control on your watch has been the worst ever. The quality of Ford under your watch has been the worst ever. The quality of repairs of warranty stuff on your watch has been the worst in Ford history ever. And uh, here it is again. Say, oh, this is the same article. Get back and you know, just going on and on. Drives me nuts. Here's what he made last year. K2023 made $26.5 million. 
Okay, that's what we paid him for absolutely nothing that he's done except for go to a lot of races, press conferences, talks, and uh, shake a bunch of hands. It's like, do something with your job. I just made a video here. Ford finally... This one may not even be published yet. I don't know if I did yet or not, um, but it's uh, Ford finally ranked second for most uh, recalls in the first half of 2024. I put this, I, I made this video four days ago from when I'm recording this one, and already I think Ford lost that spot. They're now back at number one, if I if I believe correct. So they were beat by uh, Chrysler by one recall, but I think now they're actually, I, I think they're back. I have, I think I just screenshot an article said that they just retook number one. It's like, get your stuff together here, Farley. I'm, I'm so tired of what you're doing to Ford. Just build the stuff right and build what we want to buy and quit playing the games, quit trying to be political, quit trying to tell us what we need to get. Uh, there we go. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video.